Well, I'm here with Joy Laverty, and we have this incredible excerpt um, in this issue of Legacy Arts Magazine, which, which is issue 20, um, from her book. And she's written this book called Who Will Take Care of Me When I'm Old? And Joy, thanks for joining me. You're welcome, Laura. It's great to be here. Yeah, no, it's a pleasure. And, um, and I, I love the concept of this. I love this book. And you kind of talk about in, in this excerpt or what we have in the magazine, you talk about your inspiration behind the book. And would you mind expanding on that a little bit or why you even wrote the book in the first place? You bet. So about uh, 30 years ago, my first book came out, The Complete Elder Care Planner. And I've been on the road for that long talking about caring for aging parents. And so that's a very strong concept in, in our culture. We, we need to pay attention to that. But about 10 years ago, people started to come up to me after an interview or a keynote, and they would tell me, I love doing this for my parents for the most part, but who's going to take care of me when I'm old? Bingo. I knew then that that would be my next book. But 10 years ago was way too soon, so I waited until the timing was better. And sure enough, a couple years ago, the end of 2017, that book came out, and I've been on the road ever since talking about not only caregiving, but us older caregivers who are doing managing the care of people we love and wondering who's going to take care of me when I'm old. I, I love it. And, and you talk a lot in this book about kind of this idea of denial, right? We're all in denial about aging and, and um, about the changes that occur. What's, what's kind of the first step for people to start really embracing um, aging, I guess, or, or you know, the yeah. changes that will happen to them? Well, the, the deal is, is age is a moving target. So think about it. When you were a teenager, what did you think old was? Um, oh, for me, it was like, I remember thinking someone who was 26 years old was old. <laughs> Absolutely. So when you were in your 20s, what did you think old was? Right, probably like 50s, right? <laughs> so it's, age is a moving target. So the funny thing is, is it, old is always in the future, about 15, 20, maybe 30 years. So we just, if we begin to think about age is just a, a, a moving reality and nothing to really bank on in terms of what is going to happen, we can begin the process of seeing it as such a normal, natural process and stop saying, you know, 60 is the new 30 because 60 is 60. And that is, that is where we need to be is stay real. Yeah, absolutely. And it, and it can change so quickly. I mean, you can be feeling great and feeling healthy and just have it switch, which... Sure. And then with age comes all kinds of experiences or transitions, as we call them. But the transitions aren't all bad. Like, let's say you fall in love at the age of 60 or 70, or maybe you start a new business. So this is, there's all kinds of possibilities, all kinds of transitions that we can prepare for, good and bad. I love that. So it's not like winding down necessarily. It could be starting these new phases of your life and, and actually um, experiencing more joy almost from, uh, from, yeah. from pre previous times. Because there's obviously um, issues with being like a teenager or being early 20s where you have less confidence and it's, there's, there's some things that are a lot harder in that exactly. way. And the older we get, the more we know we are confident in things that we've already experienced. And so we can use that as a foundation for the next thing. We can handle anything, really. Yeah. You know, I, I hang out with all these old people, and I mean old. Anybody 30 years and older. So I'm in my 60s. That means I have friends who are in their 90s and 100s. They're doing, many of them are doing just fine. And they are my teachers, and they show me how important attitude is about just about everything. I love that. I and mean, you and I, before we started recording, we talked a tiny bit about legacy. Um, but as you're dealing with these people or, or helping them, what kinds of topics come up in the legacy realm? People immediately think legacy means money, pouring money into some organization that means a lot to them. But a lot of people don't have the kind of money to do that. And we're going to need every dime for health care. So I tell a story about a pair of scissors that my mother gave me that were her mother's. 
And I remember my grandmother and my mother using those sewing scissors to make dresses and darn socks and do things. But one day my mom gave me those scissors and I knew immediately the legacy of those scissors. And so it is my intention someday to give those scissors to my daughter. Those scissors, if my house were on fire, the first thing I would grab would be the scissors. Absolutely. I love that. So in my work, I mean, that's a huge thing is to tell your stories and, and, um, and, and, you know, there's kind of what you're talking about, the, the physical side of things. So like you have things that are meaningful, a vase or scissors or, or that sort of a thing. And then there's these family stories where um, it, it may not seem like that big of a deal. You know, you're just telling about a, a small experience in your life, but if it changed your way of thinking or if it made you make, made a you know, cer certain decision or define your values, that's super mm -hmm. important for your family to know. And, um, you know, whether you have a lot of money or not, it doesn't matter. These stories really become your family legacy. It's pretty much all we have. Exactly. And, and we all ask our questions. Why do I do things the way I do? And if we dig deep enough, we realize that if we're given an opportunity to have someone tell their story through an object or just sitting down and talking about it, it enriches our lives in immeasurable ways. And then we, we ask the question, what will my legacy be knowing I know what I know now? Absolutely. Well, thank you, Joy. I, you got to check out this article. It's issue 20 of Legacy Arts Magazine. It's called Get Real, and it's by Joy Laverde. And um, her book is called Who Will Take Care of Me When I'm Old, right? Yeah. yeah. Who Will Take Care of Me When I'm Old? <laughs> Fabulous title. Um, and, and Joy, how do they find out about you or what's the best way for them to find out more about what you're doing? Just get to my website, which is elderindustry.com. And I, I'm on social media, LinkedIn, Twitter, just Google uh, Joy Laverde and it'll all come up. That's great. And a great place to start is just reading this incredible book as yes. well. Oh, thank you. And the article. <laughs> and the article, exactly. <laughs> Check out the article. You can yeah. read more about it. There's a lot more about Joy on the, on the article as well, about her background and how to get a hold of her. But uh, thank you so much. Thanks for taking a few minutes with me. And, and um, it's incredible work you're doing. And so I'm oh. really excited to have this in this issue of the magazine. Thank you so much. I think the, your work is equally important because every single time I give a keynote, the boomers come up to me. This is top of mind. How do I leave a legacy? Yep. The work is equally important because it is what boomers think about a lot. Well, good. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. If you're interested in passing your non-financial assets like your wisdom, your values, and your beliefs to your family and leaving a great impact on the world, make sure to grab a free subscription to our online magazine. Go to LegacyArtsMagazine.com and you'll see it there. In every issue, we interview fascinating people about their legacies, from Fortune 500 CEOs to artists to philanthropic leaders to best-selling authors. We also offer tips, guidance, and strategies for developing an excellent legacy of your own.